Five years ago, people used to think the earth was flat. Well, it's back in style. I just learned something new. I didn't know. There are videos about the earth being flat. I am going to read some from the Bible and Enoch to you, and you decide. They say the UN flag is the way it looks, and they are hiding stuff from us. Yes, I have to say, the government lies to us, and Obama had something to say on that too. He said, we don't have time to look into the Flat Earth Society. So let's get started on these Bible verses, and then you decide what you have to think about it. Let's start in Genesis, where the first thing I went to, to check out and see what they had to say about it. So we're going to look at Genesis 1, and we're going to go down. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Doesn't say it's flat, doesn't say it's round. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. So we have a face there. You see what a face looks like? And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and divided the light from the darkness. Okay, we'll go for another one. Okay, in First Chronicles, and we want chapter 16 and verse 30. Fear before him all the earth. The world also shall be stable, that it be not moved. So let's just look at this. It's stable. It's not going to move. Is, do they say that the sun goes around the earth and the moon goes around the earth? Uh, yeah, I think that's what they say. So let's look at Psalms 93 and verse 1. The Lord reigneth. He is clothed with majesty. The Lord is clothed with strength. Wherewith he hath girded himself, the world also is, is stabilized, that it cannot be moved. So, here we have it again to where the earth does not move. It stays in one place. So, let's look at Psalms, and we want 96 and 10. Say among the heathen that the Lord reigneth. The world also shall be established, that it shall not be moved. He shall judge the people righteously. All right, it doesn't matter. It, it, the earth does not move. God is still going to judge righteously. Okay, so, so far, we found out the earth does not move. And the government says that it does move. That it goes around and around, and we have that's how we get gravity. I think that's a complete teetotal lie. Okay, let's look at Psalms 104 and 5. Who laid the foundations of the earth? That it should not be moved forever. So, here we got another one. That it is stable. That it does not move at all. So now let's go to Isaiah, and we want 40 and 22. It is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth, and the inhabitation thereof are as grasshoppers, that stretches out the heavens as a curtain, and spreadeth them out as a tent to dwell in, that bringeth the princes to nothing. And he maketh the judges of the earth as vanity. Well, this time we see that it is a circle. Let's go to Isaiah 45 and 18. For thus saith the Lord that created the heavens, God himself that formed the earth and made it. He hath established it. He created it not in vain. He formed it to be inhabited. 
I am the Lord, and there is none else. So he formed it to be inhabited for us, and nobody else can say anything about who else made it, because it has his fingerprints all over it. Job 37 and 3. He distinguished it under the whole heaven and his lightning unto the ends of the earth. So we see he still has control because of the lightning and it is an end to the earth. So let's look at Job 38 and 13. That it might take hold of the ends of the earth that the wicked might be shaken out of it. So it looks like God's going to grab both sides of the earth and give it a good shaking. So I'm thinking both. So why don't we keep on going and see if we can find what it is. So let's look at Isaiah 11 and 12. And he shall set up an ensign for the nations and shall establish the outcast of Israel, and gather together the disputes of Judah from the four corners of the earth. So now we know that it has four corners. So that would be north, south, east, and west. So let's go to Isaiah 43, 5, 6, and 7. Fear not, for I am with thee. I will bring thy seed from the east and gather thee from the west. And I will say to the north, Give up, and to the south, Keep not back. Bring my sons from afar, and my daughters from the ends of the earth. And every one that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory. I have formed him, yea, I have made him. Well, we have got our four corners. And it says, look, I have made you. He made the earth. He made you. So this is getting interesting to me. Let's go to Matthew 24 and 31. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. So he's going to gather them all up from the four corners. Here we have the corners again. North, south, east, and west. Let's go to Revelation 7 and 1. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the winds should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. So here we have another four corners. So we know that it is not round like the government is saying that it is. So let's go to Revelations, and we want 20, and we want 7, and 8. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosened out of his prison, and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. So he's going to be gathering them all up from all over the place, the four corners. Okay, we have the book of Enoch. And we're going to see what we can find in it. I'm not, I like the book of Enoch. There is a lot of it that I do have questions with, and some of it I don't. But we're going to see what Enoch has to say about the earth. Okay, here we are in the uh, book of Enoch. And I'm going to say it is uh, 10, chapter 10. And we're going to start with 18, and then I'm going to read down to where I think I need to quit. And then shall the whole earth be tilted in righteousness, and shall all be planted with trees, 
and be full of blessing, and all desirable trees shall be planted on it, and they shall plant vines on it, and the vine which they plant thereon shall yield wine in abundance. And as for all the seed which is sown thereon, each measure of it shall bear a thousand, and each measure of olives shall yield ten presses of oil. And cleanse thou the earth from all oppression, and from all unrighteousness, and from all sins, and from all goodliness, and all unclean that is wrought upon the earth destroyed from off the earth, and all the children of men shall become righteous, and all the nations shall offer adoring and shall praise me, and all shall worship me, and the earth shall be cleansed from all defilement, and from all sins, and from all punishment, and from all torment. And I will never again send them upon it from generation to generation and forever. Now, <clears throat> this right here comes up with a question. Now, in Revelation, it talks about a new heaven and a new earth. So let's go look at it. So we're at Revelation 21 and 1. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, where the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. And there was no more sea. Okay. So, the, the, the earth was passed away. This right here could mean that it was tilted off its axis. Which we know that it is on axis. So, that's the way I would get this. But, mm, I did have a point. Let me see if I can't find it. Okay, I'm pretty sure it's about the axis deal. You, if you take and you've got north, south, east, and west, and God shakes it, then, of course, it's going to tilt off its axis. But we already know that it has already done it already one time. So let's go see what else. Okay, if I had to say it had to look anything like in my mind, this would be the way that I would see what the flat earth would look like. Okay, let's go to 20 and we want 1 and 2. And these are the names of the holy angels who watch Uriel, one of the holy angels, who is over the world and over Tarsus. So I don't know what Tarsus is, so let's see if we can't find out. Or in the dictionary of mythology, the infertile abyss below Hades, Hades, hell. Now in the book that we may end up burning and all, it's in there too. And it is a keeper of hell. The chief of the angels set over the torment of hell. Okay, so, uh, torches, uh, alternates with Uriel at his office, Uriel being the chief of the spirit who resides over Tarsus. So, Tarsus is the keeper of hell. And I think that Tarsus is Satan. All right, let's go on number three. Raphael, one of the holy angels who is over the spirit of men. Four, Ragiel, one of the holy angels who taketh vengeance on the world of the lamenters. Um, Michael, one of the holy angels, to wit, he that is set over the best part of mankind and over chaos. Uh, Circuil, one of the holy angels who is set over the spirit, who sin in the spirit. Gabriel. One of the holy angels who is over paradise and the serpent and the cherubim. Eight, Remel. One of the holy angels whom God set over those who rise. 
Okay, well, we done got about what we want out of the earth here. So, mm, let's go to another one. Let's see what we can get out of it. So, let's go to 23, and we want one. And from thence, I went to another place of the earth, and he showed me a mountain range of fire, which burnt day and night. And I went beyond it and saw seven magnificent mountains, all different, each other from the other. And the stones thereof was magnificent and beautiful, magnificent as a whole, of glorious appearance and fair exterior. Three towards the east, one found on the other, and three towards the south, one upon the other, and deep rough, rough ravens, no one which join with, with any other. And the seventh mountain was in the midst of these, and it exalted them in height, um, resuming the seat of the throne. So it looked like the throne. So it looks more like the one that I said that I like the most. Um, and most of them of a tree such as I had never yet smitten. Neither was any amongst them, nor were others like it. It had a frank fragrance beyond all fragrance. And its leaves and blooms and wood whether not forever and its fruit is beautiful and its fruit resembles the dates of a palm then i said how beautiful is this tree and fragrance and the leaves are fair and its bloom very delightful in appearance then answered michael one of the holy and honorable angel who was with me and was their leader Okay, I'm just going to quit right there on that. But it doesn't say too much whether the earth is really round or flat or anything in the book of Enoch. So, my thing is, is, uh, after much thought, I have to say, I'm not going to get into this. All this to me is saying, right hand you don't know what the left hand is doing. This one will not take you to heaven, and it will not take you to hell. It is what it is, and it is out of our control. So whatever God says it is, that is what it is. I know there's four corners. I know it says that it is a circle. So a circle could be a ball, or it could be like a frisbee. Or it could be like I said there, that, that one that I like. So we're going to leave that with that and let God look down upon it. Because whatever we do, that's what he is going to do. <laughs>